2017, and I am Beatrice Kessel, Special Magistrate for the City of North Miami. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if a code violation exists at your property as observed and cited by a code enforcement officer of the city. If the city is not able to prove its case, then I will dismiss the case and you may leave. These proceedings are being recorded. Therefore, all persons who are speaking should do so one at a time to ensure that all <clears throat> testimony is clearly audible on the recording device. If English is not your primary language, then please inform me when I call your case. We have a translator who will assist you during the proceedings. When your case is called, the property owner, agent for the property owner, and any witness that you may have should come forward to the podium on the left side of the room. When at, sir, did you sign in? <clears throat> when asked, please speak directly into the microphone and say aloud your name, your business or mailing address, and your relationship to the property. If you are not the property owner or an attorney representing the property owner, then you must present a notarized power of attorney affidavit in order for your testimony to be taken on behalf of the property owner. For new cases, you will be asked for the record if you are aware of and understand the violation that is being heard today. And do you understand what is required to resolve the violation? Please answer accordingly. The city will call this case first, and then the property owner and or violator will be given an opportunity to testify on their own behalf, to bring forward witnesses to testify, to present evidence and photographs, and to cross-examine the city's witnesses. Following the case presentation, I will issue a finding of fact on the case. If I find that a violation of city codes, city codes exists or existed at your property, then depending on the case type, I will set an abatement date for the violation to be resolved. Or, for repeat violations, I will impose a daily fine amount. For new, non-repeat cases, my order will include an abatement date by which you must resolve the violation and a daily fine amount that I may impose at a future hearing date should the violation not be resolved by the abatement date. If I find sufficient cause to postpone enforcement action at this time, I will table this case proceeding to another hearing date in the future. If you do not agree with my finding or fact and or ruling, then the property owner may appeal the administrative order on the case to the circuit court. An appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of the execution of the administrative order to be appealed. In accordance with Florida statutes, if a person decides to appeal any decisions made by the special magistrate with respect to any matter considered at these proceedings, then the person will need a verbatim record of the proceeding. This record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the record is to be based. The cost of obtaining the, verb the verbatim record shall be the sole responsibility of the appellant. And it is recommended that persons who plan to appeal their case should provide their own court reporter at this proceedings. Pursuant to city codes, if the city of North Miami prevails in prosecuting a case before the special magistrate, the city shall be entitled to recover all costs incurred in prosecuting the case. The current cost assessment amount is $100 per case. Once the city records an order that imposes a fine and authorizes a lien against the property, then the city will charge additional administrative fees to record and release the lien. If you are present and will be given testimony on a case, please rise and raise your right hand so the officer could administer the oath. Is that it? Or will you be giving testimony on any case today? If you, have to stand up to be sworn in. if you are, please stand. Raise your right hand. Okay. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and so say I do? Please remain standing for judgment of your test. Please apply to the pleasure of the court. 
Everyone needs to stand and put your hand on your chest for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Please announce for the record if there are any additions, deletions, and or corrections to the hearing agenda. The corrections and deletions are as followed. Item number one, CESTA 2017-0006, Afazi Akade complied. Item number two and item number three, CEBPR 2017-0048, CEZPU 2017-0020, Alamgir Hassan postponed. Item number five, CERCV 2017-0104, Alexander Sotelo complied. Item number six, CEPFY 2017-00324, Anna Oyala complied. Item number seven, CEGMP 2017-0034, Antoinette G. Atien complied. Item number eight, CEFAW 2017-00065, Antoinita Montsplair complied. Item number nine, CEMIS 2017-0045. Antonio Bolina complied. Item number 10, CEPFY 2017-00556. Aurora Villar complied. Item number 11, CEIVY 2017-00138. Beatrix Gilliam complied. Item number 12, CEGMP 2017-00051. Benita Lewis complied. Item number 14, CEGMP 2017-0063. Boni Ramsine complied. Item number 15, CEGMP 2017-00067. Candido Ramos complied. Item number 16, CEPFY 2017-00466. Kano complied. Item number 18, CEPFY 2017-00452. Carlos Gallardo complied. Item number 19, CEEXP 2017-00123. Sterling <coughs> Felix postponed. Item number 21, CEPFY 2017-00451. Clara Roy postponed. Item number 22 and item number 23, CEFAW 2017-0074, CEOSV 2017-0067, Crucito Ger Gerardo postponed. Item number 24, MSVL 2017-00403, Dixie Terrace Condo postponed. Item number 25, CEODS 2017-00143, Donna Bent complied. Item number 26, CEPFY 2017-00504, du Duverney St. Serene complied. Item number 29, CEGMP 2017-00049, um, Iglesias de J Evangelique compli complied. Item number 30, CEODS 2017-00124, Eileen Chambers complied. Item number 31, CEPFY 2017-00558, Ernesto Diaz complied. Item number 32, CEGMP 2017-0038, Esther Obas postponed. Item number 34 and item number 35, CEODS 2017-0066, CEPFY 2017-0533, Fritz Benjamin complied. Item number 36, CERCV 2016-0097, Fritz Masak postponed. 
Item number 38, CEFAW 2017-0072, Gabrielle Doug Duguay, like postponed. Item number 39, CEBPR 2017-0110, Item number 39, CEBPR 2017-00110, Jadion Luz Luz Luis Zard, postponed. Item number 41 and item number 42, CEBPR 2017-00106, CEZPU 2017-0036, Gulam Yasin, postponed. Item number 43, CEGMP 2017 0045, Guy Labassiered, complied. Item number 44, CEDSP 2017-0004, Hamid, postponed. Item number 46, CEGMP 2017-0066, Harold Meadow, complied. Item number 48, CEGMS 2017-0022, Hector Martinez, postponed. Item number 49, CEGMP 2017-0057, Herberto Alvarez, complied. Item number 50, CEMIS 2017-0043, Immacula Richmond, complied. Item number 51, CEEXP 2017-0129, I Norel Nicholas, Postponed, item number 52, CEIVY 2017-00155, Isaiah Campbell Mertelin, complied. Item number 53, CEGMP 2017-00036, Jacqueline Marceline, complied. Item number 54, CEODS 2017-00126, Jack Jean and W. Berlindy, Complied. Item number 55, CEWWC 2017-0020. Janvier Versali, postponed. Item number 59, CEPFY 2017-00373. Jamil Noble, postponed. Item number 64, CEEXP 2017-00134. George Ferreira, Postponed, item number 65, CEEXP 2017-00135, George Ferrero, postponed. Item number 66, CEPFY 2017-00559, Jose Abraham Gomez, complied. Item number 68, CEEXP 2017-00131, Jose E. Baca, postponed. Item number 70, CEGMP 2017 0058, Quan Lagos, complied. Item number 71, CESDM 2017-0006, Quan Rafael Algeria, postponed. Item number 72, CEBPR 2017-0012, Quan Ascon, postponed. Item number 74, CEFAW 2017-0070, Judy Dur Docilis complied. Item number 75, CEOTZ 2017-007, Julio Darte complied. And item number 76, CEPFY 2017-00547, Catherine William complied. Item number 78, CESDM 2017-0005, Lorita Laurent Genti, postponed. Item number 79, CEBPR 2017-00108. Leonard Ramirez, postponed. Item number 80 and item number 81, CEGMP 2017-0020. CEMIS 2017-0017. Macedon Rainier, complied. Item number 82, CEBPR 2017-00100. Marie Odorer, complied. Adam, item number 83, CEPFY 2017-00390, Marie C. Martin, complied. Item number 84, CESW, CESWR 2017-001, Marlene Robetta, 
postpone item number 85 CEGMP 20170065 mode Simbon postpone item number 86 CEGPU 20170037 Mercian St. Hilaire complied item number 87 CEOSV 20170009 Merlin Jordan complied item number 88 CEGMP 20170035 Michael Walker postponed item number 89 CEPFI 20170531 Michael Candio postponed item number 90 CEWWC 20170030 Mid Risser Pierre Lewis complied item number 91 CEFAW 20170086 Minerve Michelle Postpone item number 92 CE FAW 20170081 Nerlin Destave postpone item number 93 CE IVY 20170079 offer J Marshall postpone item number 94 CE RCV 20170093 or Ros Roscoe Postpone item number 95, CEPFY 20170051, Patrick Salt, complied. Item number 96, CEPFY 20170057, Pedro Sir, complied. Item number 97, CEPFY 20170361, Perico Sheriffer, complied. Item number 99, CEEXP 20170125, Pretty Bennett McNeil, postponed. Item number 101, CEFAW 20170083, Rafael Picardo, complied. Item number 102, CEFAW 20170076, Raymond Garcia, complied. Item number 103, CESOD 20170020, Ramos, complied. Item number 104, CEMIS 20170035, Raul Brevois, complied. Item number 105, CEMIS 20170044, Raymond Colion, complied. Item number 107, CESIP 20170043, Ricardo Cespedes complied. Item number 109, CEWWC 20170033, Richard Basola complied. Item number 110, 111, 112, CEBLR 20170020, CEJNK 20170061, CERCV 20170086 complied. Item number 114, CEMHE 20170002, Roland Pierre, complied. Item number 115, CEBPR 20170027, Ro Ronald Caden, complied. Item number 116, CEPFY 20170542, Ronnie McFadden, complied. Item number 117, CEMHA 20170002, Santos Flores, complied. Item number 119, CEEXP 20170138, Sylvia Sh Shedner, postponed. Item number 120, CEFAW 20170071, Tamali Atien, complied. Item number 121, CEPFY 20170094, Valenti Olivia complied. And item number 123, CEFAW 20170034, Walter A. Rodriguez postponed. And item number 124, CEEXP 20170093, Yannick Desoros postponed. And to call up our first case, it will be. Item number 108, Officer Shannon Sanders, Customer Richard Basola, Case Number CEMHS 20170001.
Good evening, sir. Good Please evening. tell us your full name. Hello. Your name? Richard B. Sola. Okay. Shannon Sanders, City of North Miami, Code Compliance Officer. This is a new case for um, minimum housing standards. Um, hold on, hold on. I can't hear. What's going on? Proceed. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer. This is a new case for minimum housing standards. Um, this case was originally opened um, back in May of, of this year. I've spoke with the property owner a couple of times. I've been to the property with the building official. I've been to the property with the officer that's um, sitting to the front. Um, the house is, um, if not for better words, in deplorable conditions. Um, the roof is falling apart, the house, there's holes in the windows, um, trash items everywhere. Um, as of today, the property still appears to remain the same. I'll let the property owner explain what's going on at the property. All right, Mr. Richard. Mr. Richard. I can't hear a word. Oh, you can't hear her? No. You didn't hear anything she said? No, just muffled. Oh, okay. I have my neighbor with me to help me, but I don't know how it works. Okay. So is your nephew going to speak for you? Or is he going to be speaking on your Not behalf? Your nephew, the neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I'm sorry. I, I guess mine is muffled too. I didn't. <laughs> okay, your neighbor. All right. Um, is your house in total disres disrepair? No. Okay. Do we have any photographs? Yes, we do. Do have any what? This is one of the photographs. Let's see that. Oh, uh, I just. I, Show him because he's the one that cleans up. No, she, look, look at what he's showing you. I can't see it. Can't see. Can you see it? Look. Well, basically the bathroom is right here. It's messy in the bathroom. The bedroom got clothes all over the ground. The bedroom and lower room got the bed on the ground. There's clothes on the ground. The bathroom with the roof falling out. Yeah. <coughs> Kitchen, laundry room. Electrical wires exposed. So there's a life safety issue. I hear what you say. <laughs> yes, there is life safety and health issues. The building official visited the property along with us. Um, he's already deemed the property unlivable. Um, when um, Mr. Basola had an emergency at his home and was rushed to the hospital, when the emergency came, they saw the condition of the house and called children and family. Oh. Um, they told him not to return to the house, but when he was released, he um, scratched the orange sticker off the house and, and got back in. So he's at the house at this present time, but he's just been instructed to not be there. Um, I'm seeing the officer looking in, in surprise because he's been there. He could probably give testimony too. He's the officer that visited the property with me. Um, yeah, he was Baker acted and arrested not to be in the home. Um, but he's, he's living in the home at this present time. And as you see, um, that's how the house looks. I visited the property on Tuesday and reminded Mr. Basola because he's stating he isn't getting his mail, he can't see, he can't hear. Um, and I wanted to make sure I spoke with him and explained, let me see the house, um, show me what's being done. Um, he's saying the neighbors are helping him. But as of today, the house still looks just about like that. They did repair one of the windows, but still looks like that. Mr. Basola? Speak louder. Okay. Sir, 
Do you live alone? I just got out of the hospital. They live in all the hospitals, six or eight places. He lives alone. He had some people at the property yeah. with him. I um, he had some people at the property um, with him for about um, some months, I not taking care I of him hear. at all. I cannot hear you. Sir, do you, do you wear um, an earpiece? What is it called? A hearing aid. I cannot aid. hear you. A hearing aid. Sir, do you wear a hearing aid? Not yet. Richard, huh? they're saying if you have people at the property you're living with you months ago. There, no, I don't know. I was in the hospital months ago. Blue and... Um, right, somebody broke into my house and trashed it. That's what you see though in those pictures. That's all been cleaned up. Okay, do you have any photographs? Sir, I think that's... Did you hire someone to fix the property? Because there are things that requires more than just, you know, cleaning up. The ceiling has yes. caved in. They, they gave me four items to, to correct. Replace some broken glass, which I did. Uh, I was in the hospital at the time. I had somebody do it. They had, uh, they suspected a water leak. I had a plumber come out there. I didn't talk to him. It, I can't find a water leak now. Uh, and I had a couple of roof leaks in the kitchen area and some ceiling tile. And I see a lot of walls, a lot of holes in, in um, I don't know which, which where this There's is, a but lot of holes in the holes in the kitchen, walls. In the the kitchen? No, you said there's a lot of holes in the walls. Around the Big kitchen area. Gaping holes. The, the holes have been, the drywall's been patched. No. Um, and this bathroom needs to be tore up and, and both bathrooms. Replaced. What you talking about? He had dogs at the property. Is species yeah. all hold over on, the place. Hold on, hold on, because he's having a, we want to make Which sure one? that this gentleman can hear us and understand what's going on because this is serious yes sir have you hired someone to fix the property i've been trying to i tried to tell you i've been in the hospital so we took got into the house i have four suspects I ha i'm trying to weed them out they got into my bank account and cleaned it out more than once i've been in the hospital several times and they got there i just found out the other day they stole uh, my generator out of my motorhome. Uh, most of that stuff, the drywall's been patched. I just got to do the, the one, one more ceiling and then the patch of leaks in the kitchen, which they can't do because it's wet. As soon as it's wet, there's about six small leaks in the kitchen and about 10 pieces of drywall, and that's all that's left to do. And you have a, a lot of exposed wires. So are you there now? Are you living it's, there now? No, You're not in the hospital I, I anymore. I just got out. Right. I, I, don't, I didn't see any exposed wires. Okay, listen to my question. Are you living here at this time? Are you living on the property? I just got here. I haven't moved anywhere yet. Okay, let me rephrase I have that. To Maybe go I'm to having a hard time. I have to go to the doctor tomorrow, get my medication changed. I understand. Where do you live? Maybe it's a better question. I just got here. I don't live anywhere yet. I have a couple of places, but I'm, I haven't made arrangements yet because it was raining and I had no transportation. So if I understand correctly, when you leave here, where do you go? I have an offer. When I leave here, I'm going by the bank and going by my offer and make a deal. All right. Do you understand that you cannot return to this property? Uh, they told me I can return there to supervise the work. And I have not been there to supervise the work yet. But they told me I can just not live there. And I want permission now to use the master bedroom, the master bath, and that's all I need it's to come and go. You can't. Uh, go ahead, officer. Magistrate, if I may. This was my case. That was uh, referred to me. Your name for the record. My name is Officer Noel, community-oriented police officer for Central District, where Mr. Brasola's house is located. For his safety, the building inspector requires him to do those works, such as the bathroom and what and whatnot, by code, meaning he can supervise going there during the day, watch the people do the work which means removing the condemned sticker with the exposed wires and mold and the leaks. He should not sleep in that house tonight. Uh, there's a DCF caseworker assigned that will get him housing. 
He's always has issues with the locations they provide him, but he has options, as he said, but he cannot go back and sleep in that house. He wants access to stay in one of the bedrooms, but he doesn't have a functioning bathroom. So he cannot stay in one room with the mold because the smell permeates throughout the whole house and you have exposed wiring, which is a safety concern. And I want his neighbor, or I will go and speak in his ear that removing the condemned house sticker is possible cause for arrest for his own safety, or at least he's gonna get Baker acted again because he doesn't, he poses a threat to himself or so. Can I say something on the behalf of Richard Bertola? Sure, sir, sure. speak into the um, mic. The pictures that you've seen are months ago. He paid, he paid a person to clean up the property. He paid a person to clean up the property. The condition of the pictures that you're seeing right now is not the current condition of the property. Mm -hmm. And uh, the odor that the property was bringing, it doesn't smell nothing like that because that was months ago, like I'm saying. And the reason why it had a hoarder inside of the house is because there was dogs inside of uh, the house from the previous people that was living in the house. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would say from, you know, that was the past, but the future right now, he got a couple of pictures that he took of the property and the condition of the property don't have clothes all over it. It don't have the high content of odor. So I think it would be best to double check. And he also, um, Richard Basola been going to the doctor from the past four or five months and I've been a witness of that. Even when we had the, the, the recent storm, Irma, he just came out of the hospital like he spent like 20, 23, 24 days there. So he didn't have nowhere to go. And he really trying to fix, fix his property. It's not like he's trying to sit back and play with you guys. He's really trying to fix it. And he attempted to fix it. He got sick because the, the content of um, mold was so high because the dogs, the feces, stuff like that. So you got most of that stuff cleaned up. It's not bad like when you see the pictures. Um, you know, the bathroom need to fix. But he has one of the bathrooms that work in the master bedroom. And the master bedroom doesn't leak and it doesn't have, it doesn't smell because the property has been hoped to open the windows, the doors to let the odor out. Hey, Your Honor, the way it gets fixed, because the repair had to be done by code, even if some things were done, he cannot sleep there until the there's been a reinspection. Reinspection. And, and that was the there on Tuesday. Um, and I, I met him at the door. There's still an odor there at the door. Um, the roof is still falling apart like that. Um, he's been staying since the rain. He's trying, just as the officer states, he has one room that is livable. But I wouldn't even consider that livable because the rest of the house is it's in not. shambles. I mean, I agree. the other bathroom is, I mean, is, is he can't live there. I mean, I, I, I want him to fully understand. N he can't return until he fixes these things at the house, cleans the entire house. And we're talking plumbing work and we're talking a ceiling. Plumbing, Don't we need to electrical, pull permits? Everything, yes. So, um, the officer might be saying, showing photos from when, when he went. I'm honest enough to say when I went, I was almost to the point of gagging, and I said, oh my Lord, I can't even go inside. I was, well, you know, just, I, it was, it's, it's horrible. Even just going, I mean, as you see, I couldn't even get past the living room. It's, it's about the same. I mean, he keeps saying he's cleaning up, but I don't know. I mean, he can let us back in and see, but it's, it looks- Cleaning up yeah, it may mean everything. that he picks up the, the, the um, clothes on the floor and remove, you know, luggages and et cetera, but we're still dealing with exposed wires. Um, if we're dealing with electrical, if we're dealing with your ceiling um, that I see has caved in, we see gaping holes, um, you know, in your walls, that's just, that requires more than just cleaning up or patching things up and it's for your own safety it's, it's for your own good especially if you've been in and out of the hospital if there's mold in the house you're not going to get any better so that needs to be cleaned out and eliminated from your property and so as the officer said if there were um if they posted the property and basically giving you warning that you're not supposed to be in there 
Um, I understand that you would love to go back, you know, to your house and sleep in your bed after having been in the hospital for so long, but, you know, it wouldn't be in your best interest to do that. We cannot allow you to go back, you know, to, to your house in these conditions. I have a government check coming next week. Right. I had money set aside to do all the repairs that she mentioned in those pictures, right. and it got taken out of my bank account. So I have to go to the bank tomorrow, mm -hmm. sign some papers, whatever they are, right. and the bank said that th when they go through it, they would reimburse my money that was taken. Right. And it, it's a, I never did it before, but it, 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 they reimburse my money, so I have some of my improvement money there, plus my government money next week and I can do that right away. That's my first step is to fix the, the couple of leaks in the kitchen, replace the ceiling tile in the kitchen, and replace the drywall that was uh, damaged from water. Okay, and once that happened, you need to contact the officer so she can go there and reinspect the property and be able to tell you whether or not it's livable. Um, it at will this be point legal, but I need, I need a, a little bit of time to get the money back to pay these people who are doing the work. Okay, understood. I'll give you the time that you need to do to get the repairs. I just know that it, it's not, you know, from what I see from these pictures, um, you can't possibly have fixed everything that I see here in such short period of time, especially after you told me that you just got out of the hospital. What do you guys mean, like a place to stay? The officer has mentioned that there are um, shelters. What are Mm-hmm. Okay. If he's it's already been assigned housing, uh, he just doesn't like. He and wants he to be in his house. That, he yes. That he didn't like it. Yes. Right. He doesn't like it, but it he's took, got housing. He took he's, my money and gave me nothing. He's been in two or three different places, as the officer stated. They've set him up with housing, but you know he's there for a couple of weeks, maybe you know three, four, and then he you comes have back. To, all I need is a week or two. That's all. Right, so then, you know, you can go back. He can, can he go back to any of the two or the four? <laughs> I mean, he would have to speak to his, his DCF worker. I, I don't, I'm not, you know, um, well, I don't know about that part of it. Maybe the officer can, you know, speak to him before he leaves tonight. But once he, he's here, he doesn't leave the hospital until he, he has a um, assisted housing to go place. to. So him being here, Means he, that it, he that just chooses out. to be here. Mm -hmm. But once he leaves the hospital, he goes to the uh, housing. So he does have a housing that he's assigned to. He just left. It's, it's not in prison. He can walk away. Right. So he left to come here, but he does. He did not answer which housing he's been placed in now, but that's the way, that's the process. Once you leave the hospital, you go to the housing and then... He can leave during the day, go watch the work at his house, and, and once he's go, done, go, back, go there, back to sleep, sleep at the housing. Right. He doesn't have to stay there all day. He can go to his house, he can't, he can't sit outside. There. I'm sorry? He can't sleep there. No, he cannot sleep there. He okay. can go to the house and, sl and sit under the tree while the people are working inside, but he cannot sleep in there and breathe the mold and, yeah, I and agree, whatnot. I agree to that. Okay. All right. Okay. What does the city want? The, repa the repairs to be made to the house and um, for him not to return until the repairs are made and the house is cleaned. Sir, I find in favor of the city, I do find that the violation exists at your property and it's a major issue. It's a life safety issue. It's a health hazard. Um, as I said, I will not um, just state everything that's already been said, but you're not allowed to go back there. Um, only to supervise the work that's being done, but you cannot stay there overnight. You cannot sleep there um, based on um, the testimony of um, both officers. Okay, Do when you I understand? When I fix the ceiling and, and the drywall patches, it's been, it's been vacuumed and mopped and, and cleaned with uh, uh, disinfectants. What do I do? Call the city to come back and inspect it? Correct. And if, if I can't li live in the master bedroom and bath for now till I get the money in? No. Hold on, hold on. Can I ask something for a second? Yes, sir. 
Um, what is your name my for name the record? Lance Brown. I'm huh? his neighbor. Lance Brown. Okay. I'm his neighbor. Um, the thing is, I don't know Richard or Richard doing his case and how he doing his house because I don't know if he go, if if he's supposed to patch his house or do it the correct way, which is a li- with a licensed um, roofer or a licensed plumber. That that's what that's <laughs> that's, that, what that's what he needs. That's what I'm trying to explain to him that you know I don't know. If we need a licensed plumber or a licensed, you know, to do yes. the job the correct way. Yes. That's, yeah. Yes. You know, you don't the electrician, those wires are out. And yeah. I'm really explaining to you now that you need a licensed plumber. I'm a licensed license plumber. I will get a licensed plumber and a licensed elect like, if I have. Well, you got to tell them now. They do. How much time are you asking for, Mr. Basola? Um, how, how much time do you think you're going to need to get these Sorry. things fixed? How much time? How much time are you asking to get these I things fixed? I get the money transfer, and I got a government check coming, and once I get that, I can do all this stuff in one day. Okay, no, and what time? It's, it's, it's not going to happen in one day, sir. Definitely not. Let's do this. Let's let's bring it back in 30 days. I don't want to delay. I'll enter an adjudication, and I'll do 30 days, and let's see where we are. As soon as I pass the roof and the drywall, may I sleep in the master bedroom? No, you gotta sir. It first. You say you gotta well, it. Call me or the building official. We've met at the building department before. Call me or the building official. We'll come out, do an inspection, um, and we'll have the officer accompany, accompany us, and we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, All right, sir. Okay. Thank you. Have a good one. Good luck to you. That should come with a warning. <laughs> All right. Um, item number 13, Officer Ernst Baptiste, customer Betty Charpentier. Case number CEPFY 20170054. Good evening, sir. Please state your full name for the record. Good evening. Um, my name is Don Fidelia. What item is this? 13. 13. What is your name again? Don Fidelia. But what is your relationship to this property? Miss, I'm the tenant there, and Miss Betty okay. is the landlord. Okay. Yes. Got it. All right. It's Baptist City, North Miami. Code enforcement officer. This is a new case. I was open for parking on the front lawn. Um, case was posted on September 21st. I took picture today, car still parked on the front lawn. Is this your vehicle, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, is there a swell area where you can move the vehicle <coughs> and no, park not, there? No, not present time, ma'am. I have some pictures here as well. Um, after the hurricane, there was a whole bunch of debris in, f- in front of the property, and somewhere where I usually park my car, or well, other people in the house where we usually park our cars, um, there's, a, there's some debris in the front, and we can't park the car there anymore. And I try to explain that to Mr. Ernst here, and he... he hasn't been really understanding. Um, I have some picture on my phone if if you're willing. Sure. Sure. <coughs> um two. Yes. Oh. <laughs> my other left, right? <laughs> Oh. In the video, this is b- b- f- like this is after the hurricane. All mm-hmm. that debris was moved like right in front of the house, and we can no longer park the car there. And I'm surprised Fe- you guys can drive. Yeah, and what? F- and FEMA recently just put everything on the side and picked it up not so long ago. But there's a lot of debris still there, and parking the car there's a ri- risk of like you know deflating the tire or something like that. I try to explain that to him, but it's 
I understand he's doing his job. I'm not trying to be hard on him or anything, but we're um, kind of out of options right now. <coughs> okay, let me allow the officer to respond. Um, although we all went through EMA, um, also this case was open since July. And I've been to that property many times, and I spoke to the gentleman. With, there was no Irma when I spoke to him <laughs> the first time, and I explained Sorry, to him. <laughs> and 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 today I passed by, and I took the picture. I see the 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 the, the car there. All right. So it's, it has been an ongoing situation. Uh, yes. Can I, can I, can I, it just so happened that Irma. <laughs> Sure. I mean, yes, it is true that he came to the house before and said that we can't park there. And I understood and I communicate that with the rest of my family, not to park in the front lawn, right? But So that, there is a driveway? Been, Let, sorry, let me just understand. So there's a driveway, yes. but that driveway can only hold two, two vehicles. Cars. Yeah, two okay, cars. so yours, Yes. You could, you could basically park on the swale area? We, yes, there's okay. four vehicles, so we can only park two cars there. So I, I communicate that with my family, so I park like right in front of the house. Mm -hmm. And since then, they, they, they haven't done that. Right. He did talk to me about that before, I'm not denying his claim, but at the same time, after the hurricane, it, it kind of put us in a, in a tight spot. All right, okay. Um, when we open violation, especially when it's a new violation, we always give them time to correct the violation. So we're gonna give him 30 days to correct the violation. I mean, Ima is here, um, the, the trash is gonna be picked up. Okay, so I will reset it. I'm yes. not gonna enter an adjudication. Of course, of I will course. reset it and um, give you 30 days. So as soon as the area is clean, then you know that you need to move the vehicle. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Um, if it's not clean, I don't know why it wouldn't be, but you know, take more videos and pictures so that we can see it. But otherwise, I'm expecting you to park, you know, on the swale areas, remove the vehicle off the lawn, because the officer's going to be driving around in exactly 29 days. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, sir. Have a good day. You too. Item number 17, Officer Monica Fedrick, customer Kano. Case number CES OD 2017-0017. Is anybody, is anyone present? Mm -hmm. <coughs> 17, right? Yes. Good evening, sir. Please state your full name in relationship to the property. Good evening. My name is Wilbur Cano. I'm the owner of the property. Okay. City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer Monica Frederick. This is a new case regarding the starting and landscape at the property. The property was first noticed on June 8th, 2017. Um, mailed certified notice for this hearing on September 22nd, 2017, and the property was posted on September 21st, 2017 at 1.15 p.m. I have a picture for you, Ray. So I understand it's a lot of rain and kind of burying the picture, so I'll explain. So where you see the puddle in the two sections, he has um, gravel there. But the problem is um, towards the side in front of that window, uh, that's where um, his sister um, was parking their, uh, the family van and it killed the starting and um, that's where the grass has to be replanted. So there was a carpet there, or there's a there was there was carpet there. They used to park the vehicle there. Mm -hmm. it's the, I purchased the property for my sister and her three kids to live there close to my parents, which are about three blocks, four blocks away. Mm -hmm. um, but I work a lot, mm -hmm. so it's really rare. I'm not. I'm never there as far as supervising or overseeing anything. But she used to park there. They laid some carpet down just to avoid, uh, I guess, whatever dirt, dust, or whatever may get into the house from. Um, you know, when they were walking to and from. Um, the carpet has been removed since. This is the first time I meet um, the code inspector. And we were speaking earlier about the different possibilities as to what needs to be done to take care of the issue or maybe have the added uh, 
parking spaces and so forth. So um, at this point, um, we're in the process of correcting and I would like just, uh, as I spoken earlier with the inspector, just maybe 60 days to oversee what my options are, both economical and uh, feasible uh, uh, things to do to make uh, the corrections necessary and move on further from there. All right. All right, based on the evidence presented, I find that the violation does exist. I find in favor of the city. I'll enter an adjudication. I'll give you 60 days. And if the um, violation is not resolved within 60 days, there will be a daily fine amount of $100 but when you come back on 60 days i want to see if it's not fixed i want to see what progress was made and if you know um you require more time to complete the job then we'll discuss that we'll do okay thank you thank you have a good, good evening, evening sir oh photo Item number 20, Officer Ernst Baptiste, customer Claire Jean Lewis, case number CEPFY 2017-00489. Good evening. Good evening. Please I state your full name for the rela uh, yes, in yes. relationship to the property. Uh, my name is Claire Jean Lewis. Okay. You probably smile. We expect that the property to the case is uh, complied with. Complied? All right, sir. Ma'am, your case is closed. And, and also, she wanted to say something. Sure. My name is Ducas Delva. Okay. My sister. Okay. There's another car that parked there and then with a spire tag. And then uh, we want that car to move there. And then we don't know what to do. The car park on the property, we don't know. We left the car there with an expired tag. And then we don't know what to do with that car. The car is parked right there on the, on the pharmacy. On that's the not an issue for the city. Is that's this your private? private um, this is your. That's your property. Yes. Okay. And somebody just Park put their. The car there. We have the picture. Okay. That's that's an issue for the police. That's not for the city to. Not for the code it's your. It's yeah. your. You can't. You, well, you can't call code enforcement officer on yourself. But you probably let me let the officer speak. <laughs> I think you can your, get it towed. Call but your code officer. They'll come by and we'll help you out. Thank you so Thank much. You. So <laughs> I'll let Thank him you. know right now. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, all right then. <laughs> I, I don't was going to say call a tow company. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How nice are you? All item right. number 40, Officer Ernst Baptiste, customer Gerardo Cinero, case number CEBPR 2017-00067. Uh, Spanish, please. Okay. Good evening, sir. Please state your full name in relationship to the property. Mi nombre es Gerardo Cisnero y soy, somos dueños de, de la propiedad. All right. My name is Gerardo Cisneros. We are the owners of the property. Thank you. That's <coughs> Baptist City, North Miami, Code Enforcement Officer. This is a case that was heard before. It's, it's a driveway that was uh, constructed without a permit. And I checked the record today, no permit on file. 
ich halt nicht weiß. Was hast du als Erster? Fick. Yes. yes. Nice driveway. Es un But do driveway. you understand the violation? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So, um, have you applied for a permit after the fact? Después de haberlo hecho, ha sacado el permiso? No. No. Okay. That's what the violation is. You built this without first obtaining a permit. Esa es la violación porque usted lo construyó sin sacar un permiso. Okay. okay. So you need okay. to apply for an after-the-fact permit. Porque tiene que hacer es sacar un permiso después de haberlo hecho. Okay. 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 All right. Can I say something? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Okay. La motivo que se hizo el driveway fue porque el, la, el frente de la casa se llena de agua completamente. The reason why we built the driveway is because the front of the house gets flooded completely with mm -hmm. water. Todo esto no es de, nosotros somos dueños de esa casa por varios años y no es, no es de ahora, es de años que We've hemos esperado que el problema se arreglara. We've been owners of the house for many years. This is not recent. And do we have pictures? Okay, you can um, give it to the officer. That's why we did it. Right. Yeah, it's like a swimming pool. So yeah. we, we are. And this is now. And before the driveway, the water will go all the way to. Up to, to your top. front door, exactly. probably. Okay. I mean, it's a beautiful driveway, but we got to do it. We got to make sure that it's up to code. Okay. 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 So we have to make sure. Please turn off your cell phones, um, ladies and gentlemen. So Please. Where, where do we get the permit? Okay. Speak to building the officer. And building and zoning. Building and zoning. Building and zoning. is two. Two building down this way. There's the first one and the second one is where you do the permit. Tomorrow. Okay. Let's um all right, so I'm gonna do an adjudication. I do find that the um I do find that the violation oh. and it's right in front of me and it's highlighted. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay, so let me just give him more time. Let me give you um, 60, 30, 30, 30 days. We have 30 days. All right. Okay, sir. So trying to get over there tomorrow and get the process moving. Okay, you have 30 days. But you need to start Okay. Now, don't yeah, wait day 29 to run to, you know, building and zoning. Okay? okay All right, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Item number 56. Oh, your photo. Uh, picture. Item number 56, Officer Ernst Baptiste, customer Jean Pierre Magny, case number CEODS 20170135. Good evening, sir. Yes, how are you doing? Very well. Please state your full name in relationship to the property. Gene Magny, 105 Northeast, 131st Street. I'm the owner of the property. 56. <coughs> you look familiar, Mr. Magny. I think I've seen you around Thanks somewhere. Ernst Baptist City of Miami, code enforcement. This is a case that was open since July 7 for outdoor storage. <coughs> Items stored on the carport. Um, spoke to m Mr. Magni many times about the, the violation. Posted the property on 9-21-2017. Today I took picture.
All right. Mr. Magny. Yes. I got everything right. out of there. There's no, nothing, you know. It's mm -hmm. if you only walk on the street, you won't see nothing. Okay. So everything is gone yeah. from this picture? Everything that's? Everything is gone except um, we have a new refrigerator because we have to um, take care of the area where we're going, where we're going to put the refrigerator, mm -hmm. the water in there. So that has been fixed uh, last couple of days. So we trying to find somebody to help us to uh, to fit it in. That's it. And okay. the next, um, I, w I would say next five days, it should be done. It'll be done. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna table it for 30 days, so the officer can go there and see, make sure everything is gone, because this picture was taken this morning. Yes. Since it's a couple of boxes and stuff, it's possible that it's not a couple of boxes. There's some um, tiles. I mean, it's heavy stuff under the cupboard. Right See, here. the thing is, if you not going inside the ha uh, inside the yard, you can't see nothing. See, I don't. I don't. The, the only thing I don't like, I don't like when somebody get inside my yard or <laughs> try to be, uh, you know, nosy or something, and trying to take picture. This is ridiculous. Well, See, that's the reaction I get, because we have to post when we, this is our job. We go, we go to the front door and post and talk first. Before we do anything, we talk first. We said, according to the city ordinance, those things cannot stay. And I get all kind of word thrown at me, but that's fine, that's part of the job. But we don't only drive the street, we have to make sure that the city is in, especially look at Irma, how big that thing is. When those things are flying, we don't know where they're gonna end up. It might be a safety issue for the whole neighborhood. So we, we talk first, we send notice of violation, talk and try to get compliance, but um, nothing happened. Something, something wrong, because if you, I understand, I'm not here to dis de to uh, to, def uh, to defend anybody. I'm talking. I'm, I'm only here for myself. But if you walk on my street, you see two. I can I can mention. I can remember two different houses that has things hang underneath of the carport. Hang. I'm talking about paint and stuff. That's very dangerous. They're still there. They've been there and they're still there. Well, we don't know what's coming down the pipeline, so. I don't know whether or not those um, folks have gotten a violation or not, but that's not before me today. Um, um, what's before me today is your case. You have indicated that everything has removed, yeah. so I am going to allow the officer to go back and reinspect, and so I'm going to table it for 30 days, and the officer will be able to. Um, Tell me whether or not you are in compliance or okay. not. As long okay? as you don't get into my, my yard, I'm good. Are these things, he has to go back and, and, and Oh yeah, inspect. he can sit on the street and take a picture, but not in my yard. I don't like okay. that. All right, sir, he, well. Thank you. He's gonna do his inspection, and I don't, I don't dictate to the officers how to do it. All right, I mean, they, they now they I've been guidelines. warned, so I'm gonna go with a police officer when I do my inspection. That's yeah. fine. Well, you go pay him. Here. <laughs> Here. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That's it? That's it. Thank you very much. Item number 58, <laughs> Officer Ernst Baptiste, Customer Jeff Rose, Case number CEGMS 2016-0024. <laughs> Good evening, Good evening, sir. Please state your full name in relationship to the property. Nelson Calderon with Jeff Rose, Inc. I manage the property for them. You manage the property? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It's Baptist City of Miami. Um, the case was open and I spoke to Mr. Jeff and he stated that he will need more time, so I'm willing to allow him more time to come into compliance. All right, so you want me to table it for how long? 60 days. That's fine, I appreciate that. 
All right. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. You too. Item number 73, Officer and Baptiste, customer Judith Severe, case number CEGMP 2017-0052. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Please state your full name in relationship to the property. My name is Jean Robert Silver. All right. 120 notice. All right, got it. Thank you. Ernst Baptist City, North Miami. Code Enforcement Officer, this is a case that was open for um, the top on top of the roof. Um, Violation was posted today, uh, was posted on, on the 21st of September. Um, today I went by and took picture, but I spoke to Mr. Gene. He stated that he is in uh, talk with his um, insurance company and he will need more time to come into compliance. So I will allow him, I will table the case if you allow that and give him 60 days. All right, sir. We'll table it for 60 days. Okay. Okay. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Item number 77, Officer Shanna Sanders, customer Crystal Del Campo, case number CERCV 2017-0008. All right. Good evening. Please state your full name for the for Full name and relationship to the property. Crystal Del Campo, the owner. Thank you. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, Code Compliance Officer. This is a new case for a boat that is parked on the um, front lawn. Side, uh, side of the house. Um, this case was originally opened in June. I spoke with the property owner and her husband a couple of times. Um, as of today, the boat we still remains. I have pictures if you would like to see, sure. but I'll let the The boat still remains because of the fact of the boat's been there 15 years and never, this is the first time as a resident of North Miami that I have to come to this place in front of you or anybody that's up here. It's ridiculous. The boat's been there 15 years. I went and applied like for your variance after I had a whole fight about having a $450 survey done. I'm not paying $450 for a survey, okay? F to park a boat on my property. It's not on the swale, it's in my yard on the side of the house. All right, let's allow her to, to complete um, her case and then I'll, I'll continue with you. I'll um, give you an opportunity. Yes. Okay. As Did you get sworn in? Because I don't remember you standing up. Say what? No. Were you sworn in? Sworn in? Huh? I didn't get sworn in. Okay, if you're gonna be speaking, the officer's gonna swear you in. Um, as she stated, the boat has been there. Um, the ordinance has um, been pointed out to us in code, um, and I am for I did enforce it. She has been um, trying to apply for the permit, and from my conversation with her, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I know it was a little after the hurricane. She did state that building and zoning was giving her a little hassle with um, accepting her survey. I think it was a little old. I don't remember the years but um, they wanted it to be within a certain time frame so they wouldn't accept her application. But she has been trying to submit it to um, either building zoning in or community planning and development. As of last week, um, I did advise her, you know, maybe speak to the building official in or the city manager, see what they can do um, to assist her. I, I think she did. And from, I think, Monday or Tuesday, she came in the office and has submitted the application. I think they finally took it. Um, so I am I'm willing to give, to table the case and or give an extension. Since she has um, applied for the administrative variance, I would also like to, if possible, because per my conversation um, via telephone call, she stated that I think they told her it's gonna be um, 30. 31 days. 31 days. Um, so, they have you to know. Send out letters. 
um, we did speak on the telephone, and I told her I would, you know, ask for 30, but seeing that it's already going to take 31 days, I am willing to give um, 60 to a give time for the administrative variance to be approved in or looked at, denied, whichever. I, I, I'm not sure. Yes, ma'am. That's no, it. I applied. I okay. went and I had an issue with the survey for the requirements of parking the boat on the side of my house. I shouldn't have to pay for a $450 survey when the boat's been there for that. And that was when I contacted the city manager's office who then spoke to a supervisor who then spoke to Brittany, the zoning administrator, and then went from there. You wanted to add something? <laughs> yes, I just wanted to add that uh, <laughs> Mr. Wayne Clark, uh, Mr. When, when Mr. Wayne Clark was on, we, you know, we bought the boat, whatever, and we asked him actually, you know, do we have to do anything to get, you know, to have the boat on the side of the house? He said, no, just have it on the side of the house. You know, I, I, I originally have put it in front of the house, but then mm -hmm. he told me move it to the to the side of the house back. Mm -hmm. The boat's been there now, so we're getting problems over this part, you know. And there's plenty of boats around that, you know, our, our place that nothing's being done either. Okay. And his wife brought, him, brought that to my attention. I've spoke with them a couple of times at the house, up the street from the house. Um, they definitely waved me down and come to the office and speak to me. Um, you know, and as I told her, she's more than welcome to give me any addresses that she wishes to. No. Um, you, know, <laughs> I, you know, you know, you know, hey, you know. You know. <laughs> You know, and she <laughs> said she wouldn't. You know, I will honestly say she said, no, I'm not going to get into that. You know, I told her, let's address your issue. You know, we don't know what's going on with other neighbors. You don't know if I've cited them or not. Um, but I have spoke with them, and they did bring to the attention that um, Mr. Clark stated that they can have it there. But as I explained to them, the ordinance has changed over the years. Um, and now it, it recently has. Um, we're definitely under a new management in a different direction. So we are definitely enforcing the um, recreational vehicles now. Okay. All right, guys, you get 60 days. All right, good luck to you. Let me ask you a question. Do they notify you once it gets approved and I don't have to come back? They yes. will contact you, but if not, I'll make sure that I'm, you know, put something in my calendar as a reminder and so I'll I don't try. Have to come back again. Just call me on in 35 no days. And I, have your <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Item number 98, Officer Monica Fedrick, Customer Pierre Paul. Case number is CEBPR 2017 0068. 